What is the current build variable in Jenkins? When working with Pipeline in Jenkins, you might be familiar with the two variables ENV and params. However, you might not be familiar with current build. Not surprisingly, current build allows you to access properties from the currently running build. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use current build in your pipelines. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.2. .2. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. We're going to be using a sample repository in this video. The link to that sample repository is down in the description. Now, before we get into actually creating jobs, let's go take a look at the documentation for global variable reference. And underneath this, we see ENV and params. Again, nothing real surprising if you've been working with pipeline for any amount of time, but you may not be aware of what current build is. And current build can give you the ability to discover information about the currently executing pipeline with properties such as current build result, display name, etc. As we go through our examples today, we'll also see the ability to make changes to the currently running job. So let's go over and take a look at our sample repository. And again, the link should be down in the description. Let's take a look at Jenkins file one. Now, with Jenkins file one, nothing really surprising here. We're going to do an sh echo hello world just to have a step there. And then we're going to say echo build number is current build dot number. Now you might be asking, how do I know that number is a value that's available to me on current build? Well, let's go back over to our controller and let's create a job first. And then we'll take a look at that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this current build test pipeline. Click on OK. Let's go and get this set up. And here, so let's go to this code copy back over to here. Get, here's my URL, main branch, and Jenkins file dash one. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this, but let's go and take a look at pipeline syntax. This will open up here. Notice that we have here our global variables reference. If we click on that, that's going to take us into the variables reference. And this is built out based on plugins that are installed, configurations that are already on the controller. So this is specific to my controller as it's currently configured. If we scroll down, what we're going to see is current build. And we can see all the different values that are available for us to use, or attributes, not necessarily values. And in my case, I know that I'm using build number. Well, I could have used the environment.build underscore number, but I'm going to use current build dot number just as an example. But we can see that we can get the display name, normally just one, two, three, but sometimes it can be set to a commit identifier, the full display name if it's in a folder, project names, all this other information, duration. So how long did the duration of the build take? Or maybe make it human readable. Lots of different attributes that we can access on our current build variable. So let's go back over to our job and let's click on build now. Let's see what happens here. So with build one, what we see here is we have echo hello world and build number is one. And again, not really surprising, it is build number one. Now, the build number one was a very contrived example. Let's go take a look at Jenkins file two. Again, not going to be real surprising unless you're living in a upside down or bizarro world. What we're saying here is we are going to run our shell step. And within that stage, if it was successful, we are going to change the result of our current build to failure. So if it was successful, we're going to mark it failure. And then on the global level post, we're always going to echo out whatever the current result is. So you'll see here that I'm doing current build dot result to change the value of result or to set it. And then to access the value, we are going to call the dot current result on current build. Let's go back over to our job and change 
our configuration to pull in Jenkins file dash two. Do that, do a build now. And I'm going to go ahead and open up pipeline syntax again here so we can take a look at what we just did there. So if we go back down to current build, we can see here that result is typically success, unstable, or failure. It could be null during the time it's actually running, but current result is going to be, will never be null. So current result is what is it right now? But to be able to mutate that value, we need to set it to result. Okay, so let's go back over here and take a look at two. Okay, we see that two failed, but it was successful. Again, we're living in an upside down world to where success is failure and failure is success. So we can see here in our post stage that we've set failure and we echo out failure. Now that example of setting success to failure and echoing out failure because it was successful, probably not something that you would actually use in real life, but it does show you the ability to potentially change the value of your current build based on some other value. We made the decision, a simple decision. If it was successful, market failed. You could have said, I got to this point, maybe I do some extra checks and I might want to force a failure at that point because of some other item. So we can always force the value of the build result. Now let's go on to our next example. This next example, is Jenkins file three. And what we're going to see here, now we can see we're pulling in a shared library. So I already have a shared library configured on my controller. And the link to that shared library is in the readme, or by the time you see this, it will be in the readme of the repository. Again, just doing our SH just to have a standard shell step. But then I have a step called add sidebar link. And what this is going to do is it's going to add a sidebar link to this specific job run. So up to this point, we had build run one and we had build run two. Now we're getting to do build run three. And what we're going to see on the side is that we will have a URL, some text and an icon. Now this is an icon that I defined and this user content folder exists inside of my Jenkins home directory, which happens to be var lib Jenkins on my CentOS controller. So what I did is I created a cloudbees.png file. I put it in that folder, sized it to 24 by 24, because as we'll see in a moment, that is the size of the icons on the left nav. Now you may be asking, okay, well, what is this add sidebar link? Add sidebar link is taking advantage of a plugin called sidebar. And I have installed the plugin sidebar on my controller. However, this plugin, although it does have support for pipeline, it doesn't have this specific ability of adding a sidebar link during the runtime. It's normally defined as an option. So it's predefined as the job starts. But let's say I don't know exactly when this is going to happen, I want to force it at my timing. So what I did is I created a custom step, again, add sidebar link, and I'm taking advantage of link action, which is part of the class that's inside of the plugin. Now this is pretty boring. We're just passing in the values for URL, text, and icon. But here's where it gets specific. Notice we're saying current build, raw build, add action. And then we're passing in the action object. What is raw build? If we take a look at our documentation, and we'll scroll down here a little bit more, what raw build is, is it gives us access to the run object that has even more APIs available to it. However, this raw build is only accessible by trusted libraries, which is my shared library is a global shared library. So by default, that means it's trusted or an administrator approved script outside of the sandbox. Now, since I have it inside of a trusted library, this is something that I don't have to do any kind of extra approvals for. 
This step has now been exposed, so if people want to use that step, they can. So now let's go back over to our job, make the modification, and then run it. So we'll change 2 to 3. And let's click on Build Now. And we'll see that it's running. Now we're, we got rid of our successes, faults, and all that's gone. We can see 3 is successful. Now if I click into 3, watch the left nav. You'll see here that we have a CloudBees website. If I go to Build 2, there is no CloudBees website because we added in the Add Sidebar link custom step from the shared library in Build 3. Which happened, well, we added it in Jenkins File 3, which happens to map to Build 3. So let's go back here, take a look at 3, and then we have CloudBees website. And if I right click on it, open in a new tab, then that takes me straight to cloudbees.com. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, that's interesting. That's a static URL. I could do that with the standard way of adding sidebar links. And that's true, you could, because that's all static. But what if you needed to create a sidebar link that deep links you to a very specific place based on runtime values that are created? That's what we're going to do here. Let's go take a look at Jenkins file four. So what we have here are a couple of variables with current build. So I have current build time in millis. So what time in millis means is right up here, time since the epoch when the build was scheduled. So this is gonna be some very long number. And then I'm creating an image tag. We're gonna be creating a container image that we're gonna be pushing to Docker Hub. So the image tag I have is Darren Pope slash Alpine plus time and millis. I needed to capture time and millis into a variable because I need to reuse this in a couple of other places. We pull in our shared library. We've set up credentials on our controller. In fact, let's go ahead and validate that those are still here. So manage Jenkins, manage credentials. I have a dh-creds, so this is my ID and token for Docker Hub, so all of that's set up, ready to go. Let's get back over to here. What we're gonna do is we're going to basically just build out a Docker file live, so all we're doing is saying from Alpine latest, redirecting that to Docker file, then we're saying Docker file dash T image tag, dot, an image tag is up here. So it's gonna be Darren Pope slash Alpine colon and some long number. Then we're going to log in to Docker Hub. Now we're going to do a Docker push with that tag. We're going to pipe out and grep for SHA-256. Then we're going to pull a value off of that output. And then finally, we are going to pull a little bit more data off of that file as well. So we're gonna be pulling from $4 and then $1. And then finally we do a trim here and that value gets stuffed back into this def SHA-256, which is gonna be the actual value of the SHA-256. What you're going to notice here is we're building out a URL that will deep link us right into that specific image. So we're saying layers, I've got my username, Alpine, time in millis, which was the value up top, images, SHA-256, and then the 256 value that we pulled from here. And then finally, we have content equals explore. So all of that's set up. And then finally, we say add sidebar link, URL equals URL, that's the defined line here at 22, image on Docker Hub, and then the icon is star dot GIF. Now you might be saying, okay, well, where does star.gif come from? That comes from within the images folder within the exploded war file. So if you were to go, in my case, on CentOS or any other Fedora-based type operating system, that's going to be in var cache Jenkins and then images, and then you're going to find a 24 by 24 folder, and then the image is in there. And then finally, we do a logout. So let's do this.
Let's go back over to our job, current build test, configure, dash four. Click save and click on build now. Let's watch what happens here. So we're building out four. We do our Docker build. Here's our time in millis. We do our login. We do our parsing of the output from Docker push. So therefore we get our SHA-256. Then we do our logout. Well, now let's click on four and look at the left nav. We see a star here, image on Docker Hub. Let's click on this to open in a new tab. And what you're going to see here is it deep links us directly into Darren Pope Alpine and then our time in millis all the way in here. How did this work? Well, let's click on Darren Pope Alpine. We can see here that this was pushed a minute ago. And if I click on this, that takes us back to this deep link. But this URL is not something that can be previously constructed because all of this is built at runtime. So by being able to take the values at runtime, reconstruct the URL, and then add that sidebar link, it will make it simpler for anyone that is actually using the Jenkins UI to find out information. We can deep link them, in this case, directly to the layers page on Docker Hub. As we've seen, just like with ENV and params, we can use current build to access properties during the job run, but as well, we can make changes to the job output, such as adding a sidebar link. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeastDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBeast TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBeast TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.